It was supposed to be this past March against the New Hampshire Avalanche. That's when all this began with COVID and unfortunately our playoffs got canceled where they were at heading into the second round. It would have been an excellent playoff series between the Avalanche and the Lumberjacks. Blade down to the corner now and chasing after it there is Schwartz. He'll pick it up, put it off the glass and out of the zone. Trying to skate into it was Truax, lost the puck. Infantino was there in support for a second, but it hopped off his stick as well. Right back down the ice, Baker gave it a good race. Thought he may have won that race, but it goes down for icing against the Railers. And I think Sean Bertoni, the head coach of the Railers, is thinking the same thing on that icing. As now it goes down to the corner for a second. Played along the boards. And the Railers skated out of the zone. Meisinger's trying to get after this one in the corner. Comes together hard with his man, Nagy. Second chance in front. A kick save from Reduzzi. His second or third save of the game and that's one so far. Now up for Hemming. Wanted to go back to the middle for Mundy but it was way behind him. Now it's backhanded down in deep and a couple players go to the offensive zone. Dances past the man, chips it, trying to go to himself back behind the goal. Bounced around for a second and then up to Infantino again. Infantino looking to go further down and they got picked off instead and They have to retreat back out in neutralize. Now skating in offensive zone, the Lumberjacks shot on, and what a play that was from Duran to walk all the way in. It just missed the goal. Now put on goal, and Reduzzi will move it up quickly for it to be one-handed further up the ice. And three seconds left on the penalty, and. Worcester has killed off the first call against them in this hockey game. The door is still open on that penalty box, but they got it closed now. Up and past the stick, and a possible break here for Infantino, but he overskated the puck. End of a long shift, I would believe, and you can see some frustration from him as he goes off for a change now. Wrapped back along the boards, fresh right off the bench. It's Mundy playing it towards the middle. That's where the railers skate into it instead. Shot pinballed around and kicked out by Reduzzi. That one changed directions and he got it with the toe as it crossed its way towards the goal line. Now it's sent back behind and it's hammered along the boards from there. Mundy will stop it with his skate. Turn around with his skates for a second, eventually slicing. Get three once again. This time back down into Vermont's end. Swartz up the board. Smith taking a hit from Rowe. Came across and finally find Lease was offside. Now across and flip back in. Continue along here. The Railers skate it out of the zone. Glove down by Raduzzi for a whistle. We're down to 10.30 already left to go here in the opening frame. Just the one goal in this period. Came off the stick of Brandon Clark. A turnover that got collected by Tyler Murray and then moved over to Clark. Now here's Lavalley into the offensive zone. Backdoor look here for Fine Lease. It was more of a broken play. I don't think he was meaning to throw it back to him like that. But ended up in a better chance for his linemate and up to the task though was Danny Mitchell.
Battle continues along the boards. And Fantino. Trying to work further from there. Now Schwartz. Let a shot go. And you can hear the pad save there for Mitchell. And then there's a call coming up. Vermont restrictions aren't allowing for Massachusetts residents from certain counties to come. It all is based off of the number of COVID cases per million in that county in Massachusetts. And right now, the county of Worcester would not be allowed to travel there without a 14-day quarantine, which is why we are here in New Hampshire playing today and tomorrow. 1.30 today, buck drops, 7.30 tomorrow between these two EHL teams, their first two games of the season. Of course, in Massachusetts right now, hockey is allowed, but no contact. So balancing all the different restrictions that every state has issued is challenging, of course, this year in the EHL. Now a three-on-one possibility here. A shot out of the safe made. Going post to post well there. Was reduced. He got it with the blocker, and then there's a hand pass against the railer. So all in one transition, the whistle blows just that quickly, and the faceoff goes outside the zone. Now I do have confirmation from a few coaches that are watching at home. Believe that play was onside, so I guess we can call that our version of Toronto and the video, video replay from the couch. So we continue on 2-1 right now in favor of the Lumberjacks. Sent back in. And chasing after it is McAvoy, the most recent goal scorer in this game. Continued back behind the goal. All the way up towards the line and then gets played, you could say accidentally by the Lumberjacks back down to their own goalie. Flips down to the side of Mitchell. Now it's blocked off by Cohen and sent right back in. It wraps along the boards for Baker to collect. Trying to feed it further from there and sent right back in again. Up the wall for a moment, kept in. Shot on the ice, tipped just wide. The shot came off the stick of Connor Nagy and Brandon Clark made a good bid for his second goal of this hockey game. His dip though went just wide of the goal and now we're battling for it in the corner with three minutes remaining here in the first period. Nagy throwing a hard hit that's going to draw a call here against the Lumberjacks. You could hear a slight groan as that hit was delivered and Connor Nagy is going to the box. When it's scoring chance for your opponent that if you don't take it and they end up at the back of your goal. One power play goal so far in this game for Worcester. And they're back out on the man advantage again right now. But shortly after this power play starts, the Lumberjacks send it down the ice, and it's a good start to the PK for them. Now uh, the Railers enter the offensive zone offsides for a whistle. Off this draw, it gets wrapped back down into the zone and comes along the corners towards this near side for a moment. Stuck in the corner, now kicks out. Got a man pitching down, they score! There were so many Lumberjacks stuck along the boards and the Spartans. This game is 2-2, that game is 1-1 and already finished Again, that's sort of that 11.30 down in Norwalk, Connecticut. 
A 6-5 come-from-behind victory for the 87s over the Rough Riders, which I'm sure for the Rough Riders is frustrating to lose a game in that way, but they did lose 9-1 to one on Wednesday against the 87, so to come back and get a point at least is some silver lining, if you will. So now it's stuck in the dot, then gets one and shifted towards this near side. Dubé will... Not Dubé, I apologize. Got a name... Mixed up with an old number there for a second was Murray who had the puck, plating it back down low. A great job by the Railers so far in this second period. You can tell the difference in their forecheck pressure coming out of the locker room. The puck has been to my left. The camera's left almost the entire period so far. As now Swartz has it, sends it up and out of the zone, gets wrapped right back in. Reduzzi holding it back behind the goal, a full Five-man change is completed for the Railers as now it's tipped down in deep by Clark and the Lumberjacks try and counter with their own change. Now it's hammered up the ice right on the stick of Meisinger. One-on-one -on -one with Brown trying to box him out as they go back behind the goal. Brown looking to one-hand it further from there. Smith in there as well. Brown now up the wall. Bouncing puck goes all the way to fine lease. He's two-on-two -two as a man joining him in. Now up and out of the zone goes Worcester. Nagy ran into his man. Puck though went further up ice. In and out of the glove of Reduzzi. Second chance. He holds tight for a whistle. Shell today. Already final at 11.30 this morning. A 6-5 come from behind victory for the 87s over the Rough Riders. And then the other game taking place right now, also in the second period. Currently a 2-1 lead for the Seahawks Hockey Club over the Seacoast Spartans. That game also here in New Hampshire over at the rinks of Exeter. Left off for a second. Ends up down in the corner. Battle continues and then a hard hit thrown. Another call coming up here against Vermont. This one, I believe, is on Andrew Cohen. Boarding is the call against Cohen with 5.57 remaining here in the second period. Railers have the only goal of this middle frame, and it came on the power play. Both of their goals so far in this hockey game have come on the man advantage as now they get their fifth chance up a man. Quickly though off of this, start to this power play, gets sent down the sheet. Pass over towards the near side for Drummond to work it into the offensive zone, absorb a hard hit on the way, and then it gets sent back down the ice. Pressure coming on the backside of Drummond from Mundy. Couple of players run into each other right in front of the Lumberjacks bench. Lions been in there as well, and almost this entire power play so far has been sent or spent down in the Railers end. Now it's off a stick and down the ice off a Lumberjack stick, so no icing. Wrapped along the boards once again, and it squirts through the stick of White, and they have to regroup outside the zone. Now he steps his way just over the line, pushes it down low. Meisinger shakes off Swartz up to the line. Goes that pass. Turn back for a second. Barcelou up top all the way across now. White fanned on that shot. And it got easily sticked away by Reduzzi. Mundy falling to the ice. Couldn't get out of the zone. Back over again for White, off the shoulder this time of Reduzzi, and sent back down the ice. Railers trying to go right back up the ice, and it gets hammered into the zone. Wrapped along the boards towards the far side. Couple of players come together. Brown in there as well.
couple of players come together totally away from the play as they separate now. Barcelou put it across the slot. Nobody home, and Penry recollects, sends it down the ice and avoids a hit in the process. Now the race is on for this puck. Schwartz is going to get there first, trying to play it away from Barcelou, but they've killed off the first half of this major call against them so far. Now a shot gets kicked away on the block there by Penn. So it's an even strength goal. Ready to come out of the box is Infantino. Two seconds and one. Now we get a 10 second power play for the Lumberjacks, which is quickly about to expire. Before this chance though right here, Mitchell holds his ground and the puck squirts out and towards the faceoff dot, you see the official waving for no change for the Railers. But we are back to five on five now. What a weird start <laughs> we've got to this third and final frame. Off this draw, it goes towards the goal, then got blocked down the way through. Another chance, same exact thing. Ends up on the far side wall. Railers try and pick it up there. Kicked back for a moment. And then towards this near side, DeMarco. DeMarco will serve it in on the forehand, back and along the boards. And chasing after it behind the goal was Nagy. Kicked towards this near side. And then ends up again on the far side. Nagy trying to play it out of the zone from there. Sent back in and leaving it off back behind the goal was Raduzzi all the way up for Nagy on the far side. Swartz taking off of his stick. And then sent up the wall from there. Hemming got a good tip on it for a second. Battle continues now off of this next faceoff. And then they shoot and score. It's not a power play goal for Egan Smith, but it is his third goal, and he completes the hat trick. I said it twice already. I'll say it one more time. He is a forward who's going to make some noise this season in the EHL. He's got two goals just in this period. His first came back in the first period. That was a shorthanded breakaway. And shooters can shoot, as they like to say. And he's done just that with his strikes this afternoon. Now he runs into a man, keeps his feet as it squirts over for a moment. Kicks back behind now. And then up and along the boards. Collected and sent back in by the Railers. And it goes up. LaValle, good touch in the middle for Fine Lease. He'll let one go. Big glove save from Mitchell. They're saying it hit a Railers stick on the way down. As now Worcester crosses into the offensive zone with this little backhand look. For it's wide of the goal. And then it's chipped up from there. Off the wall, it's kept in with a leg. Play continues along the boards. Now up the far side. Still stuck in front of the railer's bench. Then it squirts back down to the corner. Now a shot comes through from Swartz. Second chance. For Murray, who goes just wide. Clark in there as well, but the Railers can skate it out. Baker taking a hard hit from Nagy. Move back down into the Vermont zone. Flipped along the boards. McTavish fanned on that one. And now up the wall it goes. One-handed for a second by Fine Lease. Buck is stuck in the escape of a pair of Railers players and hammered back in. 
Raduzzi will play it along the boards. Flip towards the middle for a second. And all the way up top, shot got fanned on. And then LaValle up. And got the first chance off that Raduzzi got with the piece of pad that's below the glove. It kicked right out, hit the body of Baker and just kept moving its way into the back of the goal. Along the boards now and sent up. Rowe trying to skate into it. Two on two, shot into the glove and held by Raduzzi for a whistle. Nagy sending it along the boards. And it gets sent right back in by the Railers. Have not led in this game. But the pattern of goals. Two straight for the Lumberjacks. Then two straight for the Railers. Then two straight for the Lumberjacks. And... Collected back behind the goal. And they begin their way back up ice. Pass through the middle. Had Penry for a second, but it got Pochak free. Now the race is on for this one. Now he gets there by just a step. But Barso wants to go right back in. Picks it up and shoots off a stick. And out of play for a whistle. Buck is dropped again and stayed right there for a second. And then Duran now carrying it up ice. Duran moved it over. Up again now, Penry. He'll serve it into the zone. Back behind the goal. Up to Marco. Pinball through the middle. And then Barcelou racing his way into the offensive zone, gets to the red line and dumps it in. Lumberjacks hold it back behind their own goal. Pass all the way up for a tip off a... Down low, Clark. Back through the middle, ends up up top. Nagy's shot, tipped wide. Along the boards again. Nagy in the corner, back through the slot. Ended up on this near side wall. Sent back in once more. Instead, and quickly up ice goes Baker. Trying to split his way past Nagy. Dug the puck back out. And now Penry has it. Put it off the side of the head, it looked like of the Railers defenseman, but everyone seems fine here as it squirts towards the near side. Circling up top and shooting that one was Bone, missed the net. Infantino trying to come across and it got picked off instead by the Railers and they begin their way up ice. One guy does at least by himself, goes Boudreaux towards the offensive zone. Reinforcements coming from the bench as now it's flipped up and out of the zone. We're down to a minute 45 left to go here in the third period. A couple of players get up ended from both sides now as it goes over for Goldstein. We're nearing the end of the period. Reduzzi wants to play this one, and he does for Schwartz. Did not want to take a face off in his own zone. Moved up the wall, but not out. Top of the zone, left off, and then played back over towards the wall. A couple of players come together there. Drummond shaking off a hit. Squirts towards the near side. Goldstein lets the drive go into the bench for the extra attacker. Goes Mitchell. Pull wide of the goal by McAvoy. And then sent back down to the corner. 
off the glass. Bounce in this one. Sent back in to the zone. Got his dad sitting right next to me here. Excited about what his son did in this opening game. And for the Railers, obviously a little bit disappointed as this one goes out of play with 0.8 seconds left to go. But